Hey there, Mr. Colby Sharp. I'm in my library for the second week in a row for our Newberry Challenge. I hadn't planned on being in my library today, but as you know, last week, my video cut off. My video, di my camcorder died in the middle of a sentence. So I'm back here to finish the things I wasn't able to say. Now, I'm not here today to talk about Love That Dog as a Newberry Medal winner, but I'm here to talk about Love That Dog as one of the best books I've ever read aloud to a class, particularly a group of fourth graders. And I'm going to be talking about those fourth graders today. Seven years ago, I taught fourth grade, and one of the books that really brought us together as a class was Love That Dog. We had so many wonderful conversations, and it led to so many kids reading Sharon Creech's other books. That year, with those fourth graders, I also read to them Granny Torelli Makes Soup. I'm, re I'm reading this to a third and fourth grade class right now, and I do not want to stop reading this book. Granny Torelli makes me laugh, Rosie makes me laugh, Bailey Boy is a wonderful character, and I'm so glad that Sharon Creech is coming to my school so that I'm able to read this to third and fourth graders. That, that fourth grade group, I also read to them The Landry News. They were big fans of Andrew Clements. I read them Sideways Stories from Wayside School. We read The BFG. We read Out of the Dust. Again, this was another book that really brought us together as a class. As I'm seeing now between Love That Dog and Out of the Dust, this class must have really liked poetry. Then, that year, I had to teach that class A Wrinkle in Time, which is the subject of today's Newberry video. A Wrinkle in Time was a book that that class really struggled with. As you can see, their tastes were out of the dust, BFG, etc. And this book just didn't speak to that group of kids. I was forced to teach it, however, and it was quite the struggle because it was A, too difficult for many of them, B, they weren't really into it, and it was the first time that I'd ever read the book. I, like, I didn't read the book growing up. I never read it in college and children's lit classes so I didn't have any exposure to this book prior to teaching it and my students negative experience with this book came off as a negative experience for me as well because I saw their frustrations and I had to summarize the chapters for them and we watched the video and I showed them the cliff notes and so I was doing anything just to get them through the book which goes against everything I believe in as a teacher so because of that, I've always, for the past seven years, I've had a very negative response to this book. I know that this is people's, many, many people's favorite book. And we just saw that when you and I mentioned on Twitter that we were reading this book. So many people started responding with either, I love this book when I was a kid, this was a life-changing book for me, or I feel strange publicly announcing this, but I don't like this book. So when I started reading this two nights ago for the Newberry Challenge, I didn't know how to approach it. And I went into it with an open mind, again, thinking of those kids and that negative experience I had with this book seven years ago. And Mr. Sharp, I ended up loving this book. <laughs> I think because I didn't have the pressure of teaching it that I was just able to enjoy it. And I didn't have to think about how I was going to make it more accessible to my students. So I'm so thankful, Mr. Sharp, that we read it for the Newberry Challenge because I grew to love all of the characters. I grew to love um, the, the kind of science fiction elements, the magical elements to it. And I will now have a very different reaction action when people mention A Wrinkle in Time. I think it's great that we read it um, f in the year of its 50th anniversary and I won't have such a negative response now or be kind of silent when kids tell me that they're reading it. It's interesting when you ask kids what they thought of it because they either look at you with kind of terror in their eyes of, oh my goodness, that was a painful read, or oh my goodness, Mr. Shu, this is the best book that I have ever read. And I always ask kids after they've read it if they have also read Rebecca Stead's When You Reach Me. And usually kids will say one of two things. They'll say, I didn't really like A Wrinkle in Time, but I loved When You Reached Me, or I really, really loved When You Reached Me, 
and I really, really loved A Wrinkle in Time, or When You Reach Me is such a better book than A Wrinkle in Time. So I can't wait until we discuss A Wrinkle in Time. It will be quite a few, few months from now, or maybe a year from now, Mr. Sharp, before we get to this book. But I'm so thankful that I can now be much more positive about A Wrinkle in Time. All right, let's take a tour, Mr. Sharp, because school is starting shortly, and so far no one has come in. And I think we will leave off where the camera died last week. And I don't think I showed this. This is my new Reading Gives You Superpowers display. And it looks kind of sad right now, but happy. The library is happy because all of our Captain Underpants and Super Diaper Baby and Ook and Gluck books, except for one Super Diaper Baby, they are all checked out. And I will say it's because of this display, because kids are attracted to this display. Uh, this is all the same over here, Mr. Sharp, but over here we've worked on something new this week because Mr. Tad Hills, author of How Rocket Learned to Read and Rocket Writes a Story, is going to be coming to our school. So I've kind of shifted my displays, <laughs> display work this week from Sharon Creech to uh, Mr. Tad Hills, and I'm very excited that Tad Hills is coming and that you and I are celebrating Rocket Writes a Story for the Sharp Shoe Twitter Book Club on October 3rd. All right, let's keep going over here. This is where we were when the, the camera died last week. I was talking about these two characters right here. So here's Bot and here's Dog, and they are hanging out, and here are all their other friends as well. Uh, let's go over here. I hide these little bookmarks around the library, and kids come in and, and take them. I have to refill them all day. And then on the side over here, we have some posters. And then here's Sharon. And here's Sharon. I forgot to show you one over here, Mr. Sharp. Here we go with the Mr. Shoe racing all over the library video. Here's your shelf. It has all baby mouse right now. Oh, and over here, I think I mentioned, I don't want people to think all the Sharon Creech books are in. These are all from my public library. I'm using them for activities. Every single Creech book is checked out. This is a new display since last Friday. All right, let's go back over here. Oh, this is new. And this table over here, Mr. Sharp, is all the stuff I'm doing for Tad Hills. So it's a work in progress, which you'll eventually see done. And then I'm working on this for Sharon Creech, making a poster that's going to cover a pole. And here's more Sharon Creech. <laughs> it's a Sharon Creech library. And I think that's all, Mr. Sharp. Let's check out our Newberry Challenge poster, and we can put up the newest sticker. We have now read the winner of the 1963 Newberry Medal. And I will say, Mr. Sharp, once again, I am so thankful that I read this because I have a totally different appreciation for A Wrinkle in Time. We're moving on to It's Like This Cat, a book I've never read but have wanted to read for a very long time. And it looks like the 60s are going to treat us well. It looks like the 70s are going to treat us well. And I think the Newberry Challenge is going to be much, much easier here on out. So Mr. Sharp, I hope you, sir, have a wonderful day, and I cannot wait to hear what you have to say about A Wrinkle in Time. Happy, happy reading.